everything that you see that may have cultural references is put beneath the feet of Christ. So what we've attempted to do was to go back in time and wherever it was wrong, we're gonna take the crooked and make it straight and the rough and make it smooth. I'm Stella Winston, this is Straight Up. I'm at the Lion of Judah Museum up in Harlem. The museum and its art reflects the Coptic Messianic Christian tradition. The Ethiopian Orthodox Coptic Church predates the Catholic Church. In fact, it is the first church of Christianity. So improve your vision at the Lion of Judah Museum. So the Lion of Judah Museum has taken on the model where there's no vision that people perish because we understand this is a time where people no longer just need to hear but they need to see the blessing plan of God manifest where they can see with their own eyes. So it, the Lion of Judah Museum has become a tool by which we're able to educate, not just from the words that we speak, but the works that we do. Ms. Ella Winston, I would like to thank you for coming to the Lion of Judah Museum too. And I also would like to welcome straight up and it's a pleasure to have you here today. And I'm going to take you on this marvelous tour to see these wonderful visions of creativity by the way of the Holy Spirit through the vessel, His Grace Bishop Apollo. And over here, we have our very first piece that I would like to expound about is of King Tutankhamun, King Tut, who in the 18th dynasty reigned as Pharaoh as a young child. This painting was done in 1979, which was known as the Year of the Child. In that year, His Grace Bishop Apollo was the art director of the Phipps PAL Center here in the Harlem community on 123rd Street between 7th and 8th Avenue. And also in that year, what was so amazing about that year was that King Tut's exhibit was coming to the United States for the first time. And Bishop Apollo wanted to teach these Harlem children that this was African artwork that was coming into the United States. And so also Bishop Apollo working in the community and working with the 28th Precinct the commanding officer at the 20th Precinct came to Bishop Apollo and asked him if he would enter this contest called Cop Art 79. And they were looking for the most prolific oil on canvas painter. And His Grace entered into the contest and he painted this painting of King Tutankhamun's burial mass. When the Egyptians went on to glory or I would say go and uh, uh, was buried, they were buried in golden sarcophaguses that were in the image of that pharaoh or that queen at that time. So here you have King Tut's burial mess, but as you can see, the eyes are open, representing that spirit. The flesh may die, but the spirit will continue to live on. So here you have these beautiful brown eyes looking at you, and you have the cobra, the two cobras, which are in 3D, made all out of oil-based paint. Here you have the beard, as well as the breastplate of King Tut, which is also done in relief form, also another form of 3D work, but it's all done out of oil-based paint. He was going to enter this painting into the contest, but three days before the actual event, he got a notice saying all art pieces must be framed. And at that time, His Grace wanted the painting to be exhibited just as it is hanging on the wall. And he didn't have enough money to encase it in plexiglass because the art piece itself was still wet. So he's moved and led by the spirit to paint a smaller version of this King Tut painting. And across three days before, three days before. Wow. He was moved by the Spirit to recreate this painting, and across the way we have the smaller version of that painting. When it was exhibited at the Bell Telephone Company on 125th Street, when it was there, uh, he entered it into the contest, and by the grace of God, out of all the paintings throughout the United States and throughout all the precincts, he was awarded the grand prize. And two judges from the Metropolitan Museum of Art awarded the painting the grand prize. They said to him, Bishop Apollo, your work is priceless. Uh, across the way, we have uh, Queen Tai, who is the grandmother of King Tutankhamun. And next to her, is Agnaten and Nefertiti. Now, the importance of these two figures out of the 18th dynasty in Egypt, Agnaten is the father of King Tutankhamun. Agnaten brought in the belief of monotheism, the belief of one God. And that belief 
brought uh, a great turmoil in Egypt because during that time, Egypt's economy was based on the many gods they worshipped at that time. And for the Pharaoh to come in and say, we're going to worship one god, the sun god, it, it brought a very devastating effect to a lot of the priests that were there. So they labeled Agnaton the heretic king and had his name stricken off of all the tablets and the hieroglyphs. That's why when you try to research Agnaton, there's not too much information on him. But as for his wife Nefertiti, she was known as the, one of the most beautiful women in out of all of Egypt. And so here you have the father and the mother of King Tut and also Queen Tai, who is the mother of Agnaton and the grandmother of King Tut. And over here we have our dynasty angel. Now, one of the church's concepts out of the Bible, there's a scripture that says, thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. We as the children of God believe that we can actually manifest the kingdom of God here in the earth, make it a reality, not the pie in the sky uh, syndrome, but actually manifesting the kingdom of God here. Persons like his grace, Bishop Apollo, who has the gift to create and to manifest these visions into a reality or into the physical world, it gives us an example or a representation of what the kingdom of God can be like. So here our pharaonic angel, as you can see, he has Egyptian symbolisms on him. We have the Egyptian uh, pharaonic crown that he's wearing. And as you can see, the angel has flaming eyes of fire representing the flames of God. And you have here, he's holding the rod and the staff. We, we once again bring it back to scripture, putting all things underneath the feet of Christ. David said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort thee. So here you have the rod representing his authority as king and the shepherd's staff representing his leadership ability. Here you have two eagles on either shoulder. And out of the book of Isaiah, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up upon the wings as eagles. So here you have that symbolism there of the eagles draping themselves across the angel there. On the rod, as if you noticed, you had the palm branch and the olive branch. The palm branch representing the victory of the saints, the olive branch representing the anointed power of the saints, and you have the ancient Coptic cross in the center with the amethyst stone representing healing. Also on his bracelet are the same symbolisms there as well. So here is our dynasty angel representing that dynasty, that kingdom that we would build and tribute to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.